fearless girl. For International Women's Day, a confident young woman staring down an angry bull. A girl standing up against the patriarchy on Wall Street. State Street Bank in the U.S. showing its support for women. And from a marketing standpoint, State Street using the statue to, pr to promote an index fund comprised of companies with many women in leadership. The tagline, know the power of women in leadership. She makes a difference. Wonderful, right? Well, there was just one problem. State Street Bank was completely hypocritical. That same year that Fearless Girl was released, the bank paid $5 million to settle U.S. government charges that the company paid female senior executives lower salaries and bonuses. The company did not even go to court to try to prove its innocence. But it does not stop there. Today, I will go through examples of several companies claiming to do cause marketing or brand purpose, but are completely hypocritical in their own business practices. And then I will show what everyone here can do to truly help the world instead. But first, a brief introduction. After careers in both journalism and marketing, today I write the Promotion Fix column on marketing and media for the drum and travel around the world to speak about what I report. I use my dual experiences to discuss the marketing industry with the mindset of a neutral journalist with nothing to sell except his ideas. So here's another example. Last year, Gillette ran this famous ad calling for men to behave better, especially towards women. Bullying. The Me Too the movement against sexual Toxic harassment. masculinity. Is this the best a man can get? Is it? We can't hide from it. Sexual harassment is taking over. It's been going on far too long. We can't laugh it off. Who's the daddy? <laughs> what I actually think she's trying to say. Making the same old excuses. Boys will be boys. Boys will be boys. Boys will be boys. But something finally changed. Allegations regarding sexual assault and sexual harassment. Once, but she says it's a lot of And there will be no going back. Because we, we believe in the best in men. Smile, sweetie. Come on. To say the right thing. To act the right way. Bro, not cool, not cool. Some already are. In ways big Yo, men. and small. I am strong. I am strong. But some is not enough. It's not how we treat each other, OK? because the boys watching today will be the men of tomorrow. But the company has always paraded women around in skin-tight clothing with the word Gillette on their derrieres. Too many companies today claim to support feminism, but still treat women as nothing more than decorations. And look at Gillette products too. Now, anyone who works with brands knows that most consumer products are essentially the same. There is no real difference between them. But in the US, Gillette shaving cream for women costs 20% more than shaving cream for men. And for razor blades for women, they cost 21% more. If Gillette really wants women to be equal to men, then the company's prices should also be equal. As Australian copywriter Ryan Wallman once put it, if you want to create a product for women, then there are two rules. Make it pink and increase the price. And now, Auditing service company KPMG is the title sponsor of the Women's PGA Championship. Here is an ad. 
Here's to breaking more glass ceilings in golf and everywhere else. KPMG, continuing our commitment to the next generation of women leaders. And guess what? KPMG has been the subject of a $400 million class action lawsuit alleging a pattern of gender discrimination, denying promotions to women, and penalizing them for taking maternity leave. And here is an ESPN ad during the NCAA Basketball Women's Championship. We are rockets pointed up at the stars. We are billions of beautiful hearts. We are inspired by women who have risen. What about you? She got it! With us, there are no limits. The NCAA Women's Basketball Championship. But guess what? Former anchor Adrian Lawrence filed a lawsuit alleging she was not granted a full-time position due to her complaints about unwelcome sexual advances, lewd comments from men about female colleagues, and inappropriate exchanges with them. Nike had a famous commercial that tackles gender bias. What's your dream? To win championships? A scholarship? Do you want to be a bigger athlete than Serena Williams? Or do you want to be the first girl to play for the Yankees? Can you be the generation that ends gender inequality? Or will you show that champions in your sport can also look like you? Maybe your dream is to be the first 13-year-old to go pro. All right, or to push a sport to accept everyone just as they are. But the craziest dream of all is the one that starts a million more. But when runner Mary Kane joined a prestigious Nike running program, they pressured her to become thinner and thinner and thinner. Kane obsessed over her weight. Her body fat and estrogen levels fell. She did not get her period for three years, and she broke five bones. She became depressed and started cutting herself. And for International Women's Day, Google said the company is recognizing strong, courageous women who are pushing us toward a more equal future. But a New York Times report found out that management protected high-ranking employees accused of sexual misconduct, including the giving of a $90 million payout to Android creator Andy Rubin to get him to leave the company quietly. That led to a mass employee walkout. My favorite example comes from the marketing industry itself. Last year, the Elite Advertising Week conference in New York held sessions with titles such as these. The State of Women's Representation in Advertising. Raising the Stories of Women Who Came Before Us. Eyes on 2020, Fearless Female Voices Reshaping Media and Impacting the World. Sounds good, right? But then the event's rap party included this performance from the musician Pitbull. Music 
In the words of Katie Deaton, a colleague of mine at the drum who was at the event, this is a really a visual metaphor for what Adland says it wants to do versus what it really wants to do. So what's going on? We have a bunch of global companies treating women horribly while exploiting feminism and using International Women's Day to sell stuff. As Katie Martell in Boston puts it, profiting from these ideals while perpetuating the opposite is not clever. It's exploitation. She calls it faux feminism because it masks the underlying core problem. And it all begins with faulty logic. In 2011, Jim Stengel, a former global marketing officer at P&G, published Grow. He selected the top 50 brands and looked to see what they all had in common. He found that they all wanted to improve people's lives and saw that their stock prices, taken together as an index, grew 393% over the prior 10 years, and that was during the Great Recession. He used this information to argue that companies need brand purpose to maximize profits. But the book was based on nothing but logical fallacies. The post hoc fallacy states that if B follows A, then A must cause B. But say that I speak here and then the stock market jumps 10%. Did I cause that? Of course not. I mean, I wish. Now, survivorship bias is when you look only at the winners and see what they had in common. Stengel pre-selected brands that had already been successful. Instead, he should have looked at all companies using brand purpose to see how many of all of them were successful. As Richard Schotten put it, Stengel's finding, if you restate it at its most basic, is that brands that feature in the top 0.1% of companies have performed well in the stock market. That's circular logic. Because advertisers fervently hoped that the theory was true, they forgot to check whether it actually was. They have succumbed to a collective bout of wishful thinking. And that leads to companies overstating the importance of brand purpose. People who work in marketing know which brands stand for what. But we live in a bubble. In the real world, Do Something Strategic found that only 12% of people aged 13 to 25 had correct top of mind associations between brands and their individual social causes. Further, Gravy Analytics also reported that public stances on political or social issues did not lead to increased store visits, and other findings were also counterintuitive. Conservatives were 13% more likely than liberals to visit pro-environment outlet Patagonia. Liberals were only 3% more likely than conservatives to visit Ben & Jerry's. Conservatives were 8% more likely then liberals to visit Starbucks. Look at it this way. If I ask you in public if companies should help the world, of course you will say yes. You don't want to look bad. But what you will actually do is another story. As David Ogilvy once put it, people don't think how they feel. People don't say what they think, and they don't do what they say. Because when you look at the best data, 70% of people in the U.S., 76% in the U.K., and 68% in India did not care one way or the other whether companies should take stands on political or social issues. For the most part, consumers are ambivalent. They think, meh. Remember, people who work in marketing are not the market. We need to be customer facing and customer first and do what the market truly wants. And here are more examples of where it can go wrong. For International Women's Day in 2018, Budweiser highlighted on social media various female employees in environmental safety, health management, and mechanical engineering roles. More recently, the brand changed its labeling to support lesbians as well as gay men, 
bisexuals, and transgendered people during Pride Week in London. But there was just one problem. The brand still has the sexist Budweiser girls on Facebook. And it's not just another example of treating women as decorations. Almost everyone there is a young, white, blonde woman making Budweiser the Fox News of beers. And here is BP. Is it possible to drive a car and still have a clean environment? To refine a cleaner petrol? Can solar power become mainstream? Could business go further and be a force for good? Can 100,000 people in 100 countries come together to build a new brand of progress for the world? We think so. And now, BP, Amico, Arco and Castrol get together to try. Beyond Petroleum, BP. In 2000, BP rebranded from British Petroleum to Beyond Petroleum. But as Mark Ritson has found, companies such as ExxonMobil, BP, and Shell spend 99% of their ad budgets saying how green they are, but 99% of their actual business practices remain focused on fossil fuels. That is greenwashing at its worst. And Ritson also highlighted this ad from Cadbury. Cadbury's owners paid zero corporate tax in the UK in 2017. Think about how many poor people and people of color Cadbury could have helped if they had paid a fair amount of tax. More on that later. And Jeff Bezos always says that he wants to use his money to fund private space travel to help humanity. But Amazon has historically paid almost zero taxes as well. Just think about how much Jeff Bezos could help planet Earth by using that money here. Because Amazon workers live in cars. They sleep in tents. They must urinate in plastic bottles during their shifts. And Amazon warehouses are more dangerous than the worst prisons. That is complete hypocrisy. And here is Starbucks. Gemma? Gemma. And what's your name? It's James. James? Starbucks celebrates trans people in ads, but BuzzFeed News reported that trans employees are outed or misgendered by other employees, confronted by their former names in company software, and having trouble accessing gender-affirming medical treatment under employee insurance plans. And here's another example from the marketing industry itself. At Cannes Lines last year, brand purpose was a popular topic. Sessions discussed a transgender Indian mother, a five-step guide to creating a brand with purpose, the future of brand activism, and advertising around themes such as the environment. But a group called Extinction Rebellion crashed the event. They held meetings about climate change and tried to get the ad industry elite there to agree to significant business changes that would help to stop global warming. The marketing elite at Cannes had a real opportunity to help the world significantly. And what happened? 
14 activists were arrested. So much for putting their company dollars where their mouths were. Just see what happens when someone actually wants to do, to do something real about the environment. Extinction Rebellion ex exposed that feel-good sentiments are utterly hypocritical. As one person there put it, if there is no planet, there is no profit. So, let's forget about all the hypocrisy. Here is how your company can truly help the world instead. Businesses have shareholders and stakeholders. Shareholders are the owners. Stakeholders are anyone else who the business affects, from the workers to the community to the environment and so on. In general, European companies are, care more about the stakeholders, but in America, most companies care about making the shareholders as rich as possible at the expense of the stakeholders. We need all companies first to adopt the European model. Because actual brand purpose goes further than the marketing department. It is something that the entire business embodies. HR policies, the supply chain, the product, legal, finance. Here are some examples. You advertise that you support gay rights, but does HR grant full marriage and parental benefits to same-sex couples, even if it is not mandated by your country's laws? Does your supply chain use child or slave labor? Do you pay men and women equally? Do you have zero tolerance for sexual harassment? Do you pay a fair amount of taxes? And you, in, and you include all of these things in your annual re reports and shareholder communications. Do not look at what companies say in their advertising. Look at what companies actually do. As a trade journalist covering the marketing industry, I do exactly that. Here's my favorite example of a purpose-centric business. Mason Wartman was a Wall Street stockbroker but his dream was just to run a local pizza place. So he did that with Rose's Fresh Pizza in Philadelphia. One day, a customer bought a slice for a homeless man outside, and that gave Mason an idea. People could pay it forward by, buying, by paying for slices for future people in need. One slice would be one post-it note on the wall, and anyone could come in, take post-it notes off the wall, and get free slices. No questions asked. And that gave food to so many hungry people. Mason never sought publicity, but customers started talking. Eventually, the local media found out, and he got some press coverage. And later, Ellen DeGeneres put him on her nationwide TV show, and his little pizza place became famous. And that is what happens when, business, when businesses truly do something to help the world rather than just saying they want to do so in advertising. Here is a big picture example. Do you have a B Corp certification? The global nonprofit organization measures a company's entire social and environmental performance from factors including its worker treatment, community, environment, customers, supply chain, input materials, charitable giving, and employee benefits. Certified companies receive benefits such as a listing in the B Corp Global Directory, which is a registry of thousands of businesses worldwide that consumers can use to determine where to spend their money. If you truly believe in doing good, getting this certification is the only place to start. But here are a few additional recommendations of mine. First, Open plan offices are the white collar equivalent of clothing sweatshops. Stop using them. Soul destroying open offices cause physical and mental harm and they do nothing to help collaboration. Companies only use them because they save money. But you should treat your workers better. YouTube, stop your algorithms spreading a far right propaganda, anti-vaccine ideas and conspiracy theories. Facebook, stop polarizing society before you destroy it. Men, stop treating your female employees terribly while you produce hypocritical pro-woman advertisements. And above all, tech companies, 
pay your fucking taxes. After all, if you want to know whether a company truly believes in brand purpose, look at how much tax they pay. Taxes are the most important contribution that companies give to society. If I could summarize with one thought, it would be this. Focus not on what companies say, but on what they do. If you would like a copy of this presentation, just email me here and I will send it to you. Now, I'm a realist. I know that we all want to sell stuff and to help the world. So how do we do both? I know that I criticized Gillette earlier in this talk, but I do think this ad is the perfect example. It inspires women and it builds a brand. If only the prices were the same as razor blades for men. She's not afraid to shine Puts her arms around the world 21st century Ladies and gentlemen, please go out and do some real good. Thank you.